Morton. Tonight on the show, two giants of comedy, a pixie of pop, and a queen of Hollywood cool. Here's a clue. <laughs> You've still no idea, have you? And let's start the show! We all know the story everyone's talking about. Yeah, who are you going to vote for? I'll tell you, it's too close to call. Let's have a look at the candidates. Yes. <laughs> One of these could be Dorothy. <laughs> Enough satire. We've got a great show for you tonight. Uh, my first guest is the co-creator of The Office and Extras, Stephen Merchant is here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Never had him before. Uh, now, obviously, Stephen is known for his many collaborations with Ricky Gervais, but tonight he's on this show as a star in his own right. Uh, also on the show is the hilarious Ricky Gervais. <laughs> and uh, and uh, here they are together. Now. <laughs> Likely couple, are they? They're <laughs> some of the most surprising showbiz couples since Simon Cowell got engaged. <laughs> no. Did anyone see Simon Cowell trying to kiss his fiance on television? Did you see that? Have you seen this picture? <laughs> <laughs> really, Simon, I could kiss a woman better than that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at the two of them. Oh, both so in love with the same person. <laughs> Stephen Merchant, Stephen Merchant, ladies and gentlemen, did you know he's actually become uh, quite a surprise sex symbol? Yeah. He was recently asked to do a naked centerfold for Cosmopolitan. Mm. Would you like to see it, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the fold out. Yeah. That is. <laughs> Ricky and Stephen are here to talk about their uh, new film, Cemetery Junction. It's uh, set back in the 70s. Ha, <laughs> the 70s. What a different time that was. Economic recession, Doctor Who on the telly. Gary Glitter couldn't go anywhere without a police escort. <laughs> so different. <laughs> <laughs> We're also joined by one of my favourite people, the gorgeous, talented Hollywood star films such as The Opposite of Sex, Mermaids and Ice Storm, Christina Ricci is here! <laughs> Christina became a child star in The Addams Family. Uh, there they all are. Ooh, scary bunch, aren't they? Fester, Lurch, Morticia. Remember Uncle Fester? Remember Uncle Fester? Yeah. Oh, I tell you, when I was growing up in Ireland, I don't think there was anyone scarier. Oh, wait, yes, there was. <laughs> uh, now, Christina also starred in The Opposite of Sex. <sighs> Hello. Uh, I always wondered, though, what is the opposite of sex? Hello. <laughs> also on the show, the brilliant Brit-nominated pop stars, Pixie Lot, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but let's get some guests on. First, you guys. Quite a, it's quite a height differential on the sofa tonight. <laughs> Actually, 
actually. Do, I know you've just sat down. Could you all stand up again? Oh, look. No, no well, wait, just one take one second. Well, I want people to know that we're the normal ones and he's the freak. <laughs> okay. Just no, stand up for a second. Stand up for a second. Oh. Okay. Uh, see. <laughs> look at that. Have a good night at the prom, kids. <laughs> What does this remind us of? Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's uncanny, isn't it? You can sit down there, sorry. You can sit down there. Cool. Oh. Oh. Uh, now, uh, Christina Ricci. Yes. Uh, you, you have had this extraordinary, because obviously, you're a child star, but then it, it's kept going. You've done kind of cool indie films, you're doing big blockbusters. And now, you're being bedded by uh, Robert Pattinson in a movie. Yes, in the movie. Yes. <laughs> mm. You know Rob Pattinson, Twilight Man. Oh, Jesus, they're intelligent people. <laughs> He's the most famous man on the planet at the moment. Of course they've heard you of him. You know who that is. <laughs> you don't, do you? See, he has no idea, that man. Uh... <laughs> uh, no, we have a picture. There he is. Actually, yeah, he is. There he is. is he actually that gorgeous? He actually is. That's annoying, yeah. isn't it? He really is, and he's got great skin, and it annoys me every day. <laughs> what's it like trying to film with... Are there just thousands of screaming girls the whole time? They've been pretty good about um, keeping the, the, the amount of women to a minimum, but they're, they're usually about 20 around base camp and stuff. Oh, I know what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Yeah. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> now, uh, reading about you, because a lot of child actors... <laughs> and, and this question now becomes slightly misleading. <laughs> a lot of child. Go on. I was going to say a lot of child. <laughs> this show could get weird. Go no, on. A lot of child actors go a bit nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but you seem like before you became a child actor, that's when you were wildest. I was a bit, yeah. Like the acting kind of tamed you. Yes, it did. Can you weren't eight. What do you mean you were? What, a wild, no, what were you but, doing at eight? Well, the, the way I got my first job is I provoked oh. the lead in the school play to beat me up, so that I could then go and be like, Nikki beat me up, and then. How they, did you provoke Nikki into beating you up? What did you do? Apparently, I was just super manipulative as a child. <laughs> um, so I got him to beat me up, uh -huh. and then I went to the director, and I was like, Nikki beat me up. Look at my face, and um, he got fired, and I got the part. Isn't that brilliant? Eight. No, actually, I was six. Six. Oh, well, that makes it fun. <laughs> but isn't that? But I, I love haven't it. Done anything bad like that since? No, no, but I love the drive of it. I'd like that part. Mm. How can I get it? Mm. It's so brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it's very sort of Desperate Housewivesy or something. Yeah. Yeah, or like Melrose Place. And when yeah. you then became a child actor, and, and you know, you know, you were an incredibly famous child actor. Um, but yet, it seems that like you still managed to kind of have this ordinary school life. Yes, I did. I was only allowed to make one movie a year, and I, um, then I had to go to school the rest of the time. Same as when I was at school. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mum said. You can make one movie a year. <laughs> no, watch, watch one movie a year. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, now, the proof of your ordinary childhood can be found in the my pages ordinary. of Glenfield. Oh, no. What's this? Oh my God! Is this Why the would you do this to me? <laughs> but you look exactly the same. But oh! <laughs> I'll, show, I'll, I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you. I, I think that's alright, isn't it? What's oh, that? Oh no! What's up with that? I look like a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. You know what's really terrible is that you got to pick a quote, and me and my best friend Jackie Geller, you got that right. I have said the Jackie quotes. Geller's got the end of that the quote. The quotes are funny. So what's Geller been up to? Okay, so you were. Should I, should I show the picture? Oh, it's just so embarrassing. But just remember, everybody was a geek once. But <laughs> speak for yourself. <laughs> So, there are these little quotes. There's this boy here, Douglas. Oh. And, no, nice Douglas. He's got, Jude is the Messiah, God is here. And then Whoa, down here... Intense. We've got Aaron with... I knew Aaron very well. I am the Space Master. <laughs> <laughs> and Aaron, Aaron was a bit, a, bit, a bit spacey. I sat next to him on the bus for about, oh, ten years or something. He was the Space Monster. It's true. <laughs> but then, Christina, who I think is... <laughs> we, were, we were funny. It, no, what what you, what have you come See, with? she's oh. not like a turtle, does she? She looks beautiful. But like you went with joy and pain. <laughs> it's, it's 
all, it's, 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 the stu it's, you know what it is. Wait, no, why do you, why, wait till you get to Jackie Geller's. Yeah, that you have to, it says C. Are you uh, on drugs? JG. <laughs> no, look at Jackie Geller's picture. What's Jackie Geller? Jackie Geller's her, and her says, sunshine and rain. Oh, yeah, remember that song? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I was a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Geller and I were losers, and, you know, that just happens. Oh. Yeah. Sometimes. What chat shows Geller on today, though? <laughs> nice one. Yeah. No, uh -huh. And also... <laughs> do you ever see any of these people? No. OK. <laughs> I'll put it away. Yeah. And, and now... You've done all sorts of films, as I say. You've done kind of the indie films, you've done uh, dark films, kid films. But you've also done sort of action movie. You did Speed Racer. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason I want to talk about it is because <laughs> your co-star in the film uh, was a chimpanzee. Yes, <laughs> yes, there's a monkey in it. Look! Oh. You see, now you're oh, interested. Now I'm interested. Yeah. <laughs> a monkey in a suit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, lovely. Um, but not the friendliest of monkeys. No, well, I mean, I was on set and I was telling everybody, I was like, just be careful with the monkey and the kid next to the monkey. And, but it's a whole new, it's like my first day on this big movie, big cast, everyone's sitting around a breakfast table. Of course, they put the one person who doesn't like the monkey right next to the monkey. And then, just for laughs, take one, first shot, they decide to simulate an earthquake. So the whole thing's shaking. And the monkey leapt over to me, grabbed my left breast, and <laughs> hung off of it. <laughs> Hanging, and I didn't want it to tear it off. So I, I kind of leant forward. And here's where the, the training kicks in. I also didn't want to ruin the take. So <laughs> I just leant over and kind of quietly went, help. <laughs> <laughs> um, help, help. Like, quietly, because I also didn't want to scare the monkey further. No. <laughs> and finally, they, they all kind of looked around and looked at me and then looked down and saw the monkey hanging off my boob. And uh, <laughs> it was called cut. And then I had a little monkey handprint on my boob. <laughs> Not kidding. Monkey, full monkey handprint for like a month. That's hard to explain, isn't it, if you have to take your clothes off? <laughs> it is, it is. But everyone heard about it and people were coming over to make sure I didn't need any, you know, salve. Okay. For a little while. Uh, you... <laughs> <laughs> How did that monkey get the role? Did it, like, beat itself up and then... <laughs> Toby McGuire's been laying into me. <laughs> um, now, the other thing about that movie, Speed Racer, uh, we were very excited uh, because uh, they taught you, it was the Matrix people, and they yes. taught you how to do uh, exciting action stunts. Yes, they did. That you could, you could do a cartwheel and pick up a gun at the same time. Yep. And in chat show styley, I was going to encourage Christina to do a cartwheel and pick up a gun. You're excited about that, aren't you? <laughs> is she? <laughs> Apparently, no, she won't. But there's a, there is a good reason why you can't. Oh, OK. It's just... Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a Victorian movie right now. It's, it takes place in, I don't know, 1890s, something. And I have to do nudity in it. And apparently, at that time, there was no armpit hair shaving. So, can't raise my hands above my head. <laughs> How long has it been growing now? Since January 16th. Whoa! <laughs> Did it Bo Derek style and tucked it in or something? <laughs> you've, got a, you've got a sleeve on. I know, but still. It pops out. If I was raised that <laughs> way. You, can't you train it like a like Ivy to go <laughs> to sort of go down the dress like long? I could slick it down. Slick it well, or just train it. Just train it. Like, it would be like a kind of like a vest, like a waistcoat of hair. Yeah. <laughs> and then a lady is often. Oh, do you know what I mean? If yeah. like you'd be choosy. <laughs> Cute. When's the big day? When's the big day when you can kindly get Not rid of it? Not until the very end of the shoot. My, my la like, the last week But hold week on, of though. Shoot. Why can they just give you a little underarm wig? <laughs> <laughs> what is this thing when we're watching a Victorian film and going, where's the underarm hair? Boo! Let's see some underarm hair. If you see giant, you can walk around like a normal person. They can put big tufts of hair <laughs> on you. <laughs> Why are you growing your underarm hair to be in a, a Victorian film? I've never thought of that. I've never, I seen, never thought about either. Yeah, okay. Also, so okay. they didn't show their underarm hair. Oh, it's a nude scene. Nude scene. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Got yeah. <laughs> you yeah. there. Yeah. Why haven't you got hairy legs then? Because they said that part wasn't necessary. 
I don't know. I don't make, make the rules. Any sense. They, made, they made the rules up. They just wanted to see if they could make you grow under arm hair. Yeah. <laughs> or you don't want to do the cartwheel. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just remembered something. Go on. Fact fans. It was uh, no. It was in the French Revolution. Yeah. It was, no, before the French in the court of Louis the whoever. Yeah. That, These are know that. Go on. Yeah. That's when <laughs> that's when they <laughs> started no, shaving their yes. uh, thing because of uh, body lice. Um, yeah. yeah. We have reference photos of naked Victorian ladies with armpit hair. They were whores. <laughs> If you were naked in a photograph in the Victorian era, era you were not a photos. nice the lady. Is going <laughs> I've got this one. Look at that. I've got, I've got, I've got Playboy since 1820. <laughs> they weren't regular ladies. I no. know they were. These of course, they weren't regular ladies. They wouldn't have their pictures taken naked. naked. Exactly. You're they were right. Hookers. Yeah. yeah. Right. Are you playing a hooker? No. Well then, <laughs> shave away. <laughs> Let's get a Philly shave in here now. <laughs> Some money for charity. Come on. <laughs> we all do it. <laughs> we all do it. How would you? She would made her do a cartwheel anyway. Look they what she's wearing. They were going to bring me track pants. Oh, okay, right. What? And you were going to get into that just to do a cartwheel to prove to him you could do a cartwheel? That's how nice the scene is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Apparently, no. I believed the armpit thing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. You've been a sucker. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. You could do a cartwheel, I reckon. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Cheering. You could do it. You could do it. How can I? But I'm six foot seven. How am I going to do it? What's the with it? I You're all in proportion. Doing... You're not all in proportion. <laughs> <laughs> That's something you should know about me. Do a cork. Why? I bet you could do one off of here. Definitely. Onto that what? Platform. Don't keep pushing me into Justine it. Justina Ritchie and Graham Norton would like you to do a cartwheel. <laughs> Why don't you do a cartwheel? I think the ladies and gentlemen but would I like that. I you haven't well. shaved my penis. <laughs> I am. I, I can't. Why would I do a car with a pick up a gun? I'd just pick up a gun. I wouldn't. No. No, 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 no. No, you wouldn't. Because they're firing at you, right? Yeah. And you can't run because they're shooting head height. You go, oh, I know. I'll do a cartwheel, let them shoot my legs, less important than the head, yeah. right? Pick the gun up, crumble because they've shot my legs. <laughs> and then you shoot them. Problem straight away. Go on. Mid cartwheel, yeah. they're shooting at me. Yeah. Glasses come off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a gun. Now I'm shooting at you. <laughs> Have a cartwheel without your glasses on. I can't, I don't know how to do a cartwheel. I'll, I'll, give, a cartwheel. It, I'll give a thousand pounds to charity if you do a cartwheel. <laughs> Why has it got to be the charity? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, isn't it? Fifteen hundred. I'll put in the check, and uh, I just don't think I can get up in the air. Just gonna throw your legs over your head. Just got to throw your head to your legs. They will. They go and going. see Cemetery Junction tomorrow if you do that cartwheel. I don't. This is. Oh, oh, shut up. Like the Millennium Wheel. Oh. <laughs> this is going to be brilliant. Yeah. I should have ironed more than the front of my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm swaying. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Now I how think to do a you're probably safer to do it behind the sofa. Oh. But I've you never been there. The and they're like, yes. <laughs> yeah, behind the sofa. Oh. Okay, here we go. Oh. How do you? Oh. Do a cartwheel, Graham. Oh. Um, you do you know how to. So just put your arms up. Okay, over thank your you. Head. So be so careful. <laughs> <laughs> just, just put your arms up like that, and you yeah. go over. You just do that. <laughs> no, it's a cartwheel. It's straight ahead. Is no, it? yeah, just that's a front. No, no, it's sideways, isn't it? <laughs> sideways. Yeah. You have one hand. King of gym. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. How am I going to get my legs up in that far? You kick them really Look! hard. Remember, no, I don't mean. I don't no, know how to hit your something. I can't. Pardon what? me? Momentum's your friend. Yeah. We, we Why did you put a banana on the floor? Well, I thought I was supposed to be picking up a gun. <laughs> I, I wouldn't run before you could walk. I you need, you need a bit of momentum. So you go back there, right? And then look. So look. So you're going to run up here, right? 
you're going to put your hand there and you're going to... Your legs are going to go up, it's going to be amazing. They're going to go... We're going to slow it down. <laughs> you'll do that and you're going to go... I think it's possible. <laughs> You made it. me believe. It is possible. Okay. This is gonna be amazing. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, so, wait, 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 wait. So, that, this hand, so, Christina, is it that hand on the ground? That hand on the ground? Yes, that first. That hand on the ground. Oh, wait, so I can and then see kick that leg for all your worth. Yes, for oh. all your worth. Okay. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna do it. You're <laughs> say, you've so earned the plug for your movie we're about to give you now. <laughs> 1,500 quid, now. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was good. I think when you watch that back, you'll be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> no, you got more height than you think. Really? Yes. Really? I remembered something you said once when we were promoting this film. We decided not to dick about so people took us serious as directors. <laughs> Would back. Martin Scorsese have done that? <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't. Oh, dear. Uh, uh, but we could, let's put this back, right? OK. For continuity. And if you, no one will ever know that happened. <laughs> so, if, 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 I mean, if he looks like a prat, cut it out. Oh, Hold on. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> OK. And so that so film I'll go... was Cemetery Junction. <laughs> 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 so, Cemetery Junction, it's very exciting, it, you know, it's a big budget film. It comes out on Wednesday, and it's your film. You've the two of you written and directed it. Yep. Yeah. And essentially, it's a sort of coming of age movie, the 1970s, set in Reading. Yeah. I, 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 we, we should sort of um, state really that it's not a it's not a comedy. If people are expecting to see a knockabout comedy from a couple of blokes off the telly, um, there are a lot of laughs in it. Don't, don't tell funny, yourself short. It, but it is a drama. I think it is yeah. a drama. You're right. It's a coming of age film about a group of twenty somethings trying to escape. Escape everything, small town, the mentality of the, the era, it's early 70s. And um, I think we've always touched on that sort of um, stifled ambition. We did it in the office and extras. Um, but it's a feel good film. It's not a gritty, depressing Brit kitchen sink drama. Well, listen, we've got a clip. This is uh, the, uh, the central character. He's uh, trying to avoid factory work, get into the glamorous kind of office world of selling insurance. Yeah. And uh, I think that sort of explains the clip. This is him trying to start his career. Hello there, my name's Freddie Taylor. I'm the vigilant life insurance company. Come on, Brian, it's a few pence a week, it's nothing. Does it look like I'm made of money? If you get married one day. I will get married, definitely, but I want to park this in a few more garages first. So what if you die? What's your wife going to do? I'll tell you what my wife will do. She'll bleep me dry when I'm alive, and she'll bleep me dry when I'm dead. And the metal will get, she's already winding me up. <laughs> Tap C, what are you stupid idiot? Buy a policy. No. Who's gonna pay for your funeral? I've got a few years yet. Not with all that fat round your arm. I know I'm not paying for it. Like you'll still be around when I go. Bury me in the garden if you want, I don't care. Yeah, he buries everything in the garden. An old mangle down there, old cooker. I'm not paying the council to take away rubbish. Well, you better start digging out for him soon, because I'm not doing it. You won't be alive when I die. You'll already be buried down there with the mangle. That remind me to do that next week, Kath. Dad, buy a policy or I'll be out of work on Monday. Good. You can help me dig your grandmother's grave. <laughs> you showed there probably the only sort of um the real out and out comedy bits, the family. And that's sort of loosely based on my family. That that's my nan. That is just my nan. And um um, my dad did used to bury things in the garden because he wouldn't pay for the council to take stuff away. So down the bottom of my garden, I'm going, there was a mangle, a cooker, a fridge, a couple of dogs, a couple of... I just think of an archaeologist in a million years digging it up and going, these dogs used to cook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the rest, it's, it, it is about the, you know, I, I, I'm in it very little and Steve, Steve's in it as a cameo, but it's about this real bright young cast. Um, yeah, which are, I mean, and actually, you know, there's been a lot of talk about, oh, you've cast beautiful people, but, you know, it's nice to look at beautiful people. Of course it is. No one wants to look at ugly people. Uh, that's why she's a film star and he's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, no, but, um, but also, you know, if you look at... 
if you look at people from the 70s, if you look at old TV shows, they do look a lot like oh, us, unfortunately. Oh, they're worse. Not... You look at an old episode of Bullseye or something, <laughs> and uh, it's like, you know, 1974, and people come out with, like, four teeth, <laughs> like, <laughs> really insane, little moustache, and they go, how old are you? And you go, and I think he's going to say about 45. They go, I'm 19. Christ, <laughs> <laughs> what do you yeah. mean you're not? What have you been through? <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, it, it, you know, it, we, we've got... I think we've got the reality right, but... It's it, a slightly it, more romanticised vision of, of, uh, of how we remember growing up, you know, and it, so it's a lot more bright and sunshiny, cos in our minds, growing up in childhood was sort of bright and full of excitement and energy and stuff, and that's what we've tried to do. And like Ricky says, not make it really gloomy and... Cut, slit your, thri slit mm. your throat? Wrist. Wrist. No, wrist. Yeah. Either one. Well, no, easy. <laughs> we, we, we love... Hollywood has done some of the best and the worst films ever. Um, and, but they've got a monopoly on that, that coming of age and angsty and getting out there and leaving it behind. And this was influenced by a lyric by Bruce Springsteen from Thunder Road. It's a town full of losers and we're pulling out of here to win. And we thought, why can't we do a British film that's glorious and exciting and cool? And we've left that veil of irony behind with this. But I, I, I think, I think we've well, done I think it. part of the problem is that in America, when Bruce says, I'm going to leave this town, you know, you, you know he's going to drive for a thousand miles. Whereas here, you sort of, you drive and you end up in Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's quite tricky, it's not quite as romantic. Um, but we, we, so we tried to think of it, you know, a, a way of sort of doing it, capturing that spirit differently. Growing up, though, can you relate to these characters? Were you kind of the rebel when you were growing up? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell do you think? Well... No, I mean, look at me, for goodness sake. I mean... Do you know for a... You might have come full circle. No, I didn't, unfortunately. I, for a brief period of time in my teens, I chose voluntarily to wear a bow tie to school. <laughs> How does that go for you? <laughs> Turns out it doesn't make you quite the babe magnet that you might think. <laughs> um, what was the thing about joss sticks? That when you would go to parties? Well, no, I just was a little bit cosseted. And, uh, and I went to a party once and someone lit some joss sticks and I didn't know what they were and I thought they were drugs. <laughs> What's a joss stick? It's an incense stick. Oh, yeah. OK, sorry. And yeah, yeah. so I, because I thought it was drugs, I started acting like it was having an effect on me. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Ooh, jeez. <laughs> Better put some of these joss sticks. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. This is good shit, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, who's your guy? <laughs> I need some good stuff. Oh, dear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, talking about the, in the film, that, that whole idea of the families and kind of, you know, the highs and lows of family life. Uh, well, there's a website I want to show you called Awkward Family Photos, which is what oh, it's... Yeah. Have you seen this? Oh, very, oh, you have. Right, so it's a place where people send in their worst family photos. And uh, this is, it's become huge, and all these pictures are now going to be a book. I think it's coming out in the fall. So uh, we've got a selection of uh, some of these uh, pictures. You can see them down here. Mm -hmm. Now, this first one is a kind of a classic of the genre of awkward family photo. Because what I love about <laughs> this is they've really thought about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sit here. I assume she has an, her skirts at the dry cleaners or something. <laughs> I love the way things like, look, just draw those curtains so the light is right. <laughs> yeah, I think the room looks nice. I think the room <laughs> looks nice. Yeah. yeah. Stand, stand behind the sofa. But they're not the okay, actually, no, Neil, Neil, they must, have, they must have already started standing, and then an uncle kind of went, no, actually, it's better, I think, if you all kneel, because then your heads are all on the same level. <laughs> or they've got very short legs. <laughs> It's been a horrible accident, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're they're during a exactly, gunfight. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they're they're all off the knees. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, OK, uh, next one. Which one is this one? Oh, no, this. Well, talk about your awkward family photo. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. It must be all there. It must be all there. The no, I think Sorry. it's a ferret. Is it? Yeah. It's a ferret. Oh, it's, a, it's a ferret with a face like an owl. It's a ferret. That's the widest oh, ferret. Oh, hang on, maybe it is an owl. Ferret. Is it an owl or a ferret? No, that's not an owl. Is yeah. it a badger? Is it an albino oh, badger? Oh, maybe it's a badger. <laughs> you get the feeling... You get the feeling of all the things in that picture, they love the ferret most. Yeah. <laughs> and also, do you think they were all there kind of going, who is the mother? <laughs> uh, oh, this oh, is... No. This is genius. There is One. so much therapy going on after this picture. <laughs> we love both our children. <laughs> Oh, bless 
listen. You can imagine the photographer kind of going, uh, would you like me to sit in your lap? No. <laughs> There's a perfectly good stool over there. That is terrible. They're making a serial killer. Look how low his ears are. Bless him. He's got little ears coming out of his neck. <laughs> oh. I've just noticed, though, look at the expression on the daughter's face. How pleased is she? Uh, yeah. <laughs> look at her. Look at her. Look at her. She is so delighted. <laughs> She's just been told that one of them's going to university. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is this the last one? Right, so there they are. Very nice. And they've been married for a while. They have two children. And I think Mrs. has said, you know, I love you, but I don't... Let's not have sex anymore. And he's gone, OK. I don't think he's really having sex with this dog. <laughs> I'm not even sure that is a dog. I think that's the weirdest shaped penis ever. <laughs> <laughs> or a novelty condom. <laughs> <laughs> Why has the dog got a rosette? He came first. <laughs> he's number one. He's number one. OK, uh, well done, family. Very good. Excellent. Uh, by the way, if uh, you at home have any awkward family photos that you'd like to be considered for that book, uh, send them to us and uh, we'll get round to mocking them at some stage and uh, <laughs> possibly pass them on to the publishers. <gasps> but wait, is there a sprinkling of fairy dust I detect? It must be my favourite pocket pop princess, Pixie Lot is here! <laughs> You're very tall. Yeah, I think it's my heels. They're quite Stop. high. Don't ruin it for me. <laughs> okay, so <sorry>. they <laughs> work my magic. Okay. <laughs> I'd like I, to see that. I think... I'd like to see you work your magic. <laughs> All right, swap places. Ever seen a uh, six foot seven guy do a cartwheel? <laughs> I did actually. I was watching you backstage. Did you? All right, Impressive. Never mind. <laughs> Now, Pixie Lot, uh, you little creature, you, you're here to uh, sing a song. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what are you singing? I'm singing a song called My Love. I've never sung it before live. It's oh. an exclusive track from the album. I hope it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have the album here. Uh, and this album, is this the one it's sold? Is it 500,000 copies this is sold? I think so, so far, yeah. I mean, that is a fantastic <laughs> sequel. <laughs> I turned 19 a couple of months ago, yeah. So you were... Yeah. You, were you 17 when this came out or 18 when this came out? I was 18. It's not been out for that long. I mean, that is just mad, isn't it? And now, you know, it's all over the copy. And now you're in America, I know. Yeah. And you're planning to invade America. Uh, well, I'm releasing my music out there, so hopefully it all goes well. Fingers crossed. And, uh, very excitingly, I believe you're working with one of the uh, Jonas Brothers. Is this true? Uh, well, last time we went out to LA, we wrote a song together. Wrote a song together? Yeah. <laughs> Which is Joe Jonas, wasn't it? Yeah. And, uh, oh, and whoop. And, uh, <laughs> yes. But is he still wearing his ring? <laughs> yes, he is. Oh. 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 Wow. <laughs> is that Mrs. Jonas? <laughs> oh, I love that. Yes, he is. <laughs> How dare you cast aspersions on the on the virginal Jonas Brothers? I no, I just don't. understand the, the, the virginity ring. Yes. Yeah. Oh. All, th all three of them. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm not sure. I didn't look. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't look. I oh, look. Where's he wearing it? <laughs> <laughs> that sort of defeats the object, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's very no. tight. <laughs> <laughs> Now, listen, uh, we, we, uh, enough to do, very young star, very young star. And is it, you still travel with your mother and stuff. She's quite protective of you. She, um, she's come to most things with me. She's not here today, actually. My sister is. Woohoo! <laughs> ever, uh, yeah. ever done any, uh, ever done any jostics? <laughs> talking about yeah, this. I was I a bit confused by it. You I could fix you up, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I brought back some uh, from India. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, look, the thing is, I just think you're 19, you're hugely successful. Sometimes it must be kind of annoying having your mother around. 
I mean, it's great because I have to go, like, fly to, like, loads of random different places. And I think I'd be really lonely if I was just by myself in my hotel room. No, you wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hate it. <laughs> you really, you'd make friends, trust me, you'd make friends. I'd make friends, yeah, I guess. Your mother wouldn't like, but you would make <laughs> friends. <laughs> Is it true the thing that you want to get a tattoo, which I think you should, frankly, uh, and your mother won't what? let you? I... You're the devil. <laughs> She's 19. <laughs> well, then the wait money's to... flooding in. Now's yeah, the time to do that. It. Wait till she's 60, and then go. Well, I've got. That's it. I'll have a tattoo now. <laughs> what? Yeah, you have loads of tattoos, haven't you? Do you regret I them? I do. Well, you can't lift your arms. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I can't lift my arms because I had hair tattooed. <laughs> um, no, I've, I've had two removed. Yeah. And, it, and it does hurt. Yeah. So, Did I get it's completely not that removed? Bad. Is there still like a little essence? You of... can still sort of see my last sentiment that yeah. I had removed over here. Oh, yeah. Right. Now, I've seen the, the fairy one. Which one? I don't know. On, fairy? Your, wrist. On your wrist. It's not a fairy. Oh, isn't it? No, it's, a, it's an Edward Gorey illustration. And of course, it's supposed to be drawn that way so I can show it to people like this. But, in, but I was stupid, and I had it drawn so that I could look at it. Show it to us like this. I do like that. Wait, oh. it, uh, it's really hard to see. It's all, it's all screwed up. So that's an Edward Gorey illustration, and then I have a little mermaid down there. Oh, which, pretty. Yeah, there you go. Is there a tattoo of some bananas on your boob? Because that could explain it. <laughs> Do you think would suit me? Where, where, where no, I no, wear a, wear a transfer. That's what I used to do. <laughs> <laughs> I was too scared to have to do. In the film, I've got a couple of tats. Ah. Just um, uh, an anchor. It's what people shout to me oh, anyway. I, like I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the next tattoo I actually want to get. What? Uh, I, an anchor. Yeah. Good, like Popeye. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. But it looks very real. It does. Yeah. That's that's how good that film is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go for the story. Stay for the tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, uh, look, the people over there are waiting to, to, to play music for you Thanks. to sing. So if you want to go over and get ready, Pixie Lot, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> a very gorgeous. Very shortly, we'll put some more brave viewers in the collapsing red chair. But first, singing My Love from her album Turn It Up, it is Pixie Lot. <laughs> Thank you very much, Vicky. Thank you very much to the band as well. Thank you very much, Now, you sit down there because that is nearly it. But before we say goodnight, uh, it's that time again. The collapsing chair awaits. You, the viewers, tell us your most interesting anecdote. And if we get bored, uh, we pull this lever. <laughs> Honestly, I still think we should market this chair. This chair should be sold at Christmas. People would buy it. <laughs> uh, OK, so uh, who's up first in the chair? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Sharon Dooling. Sharon Dooling. Yes. Dooling. Lovely. Where are you from, Sharon Dooling? Canada. Marvellous. <laughs> okay. okay, Sharon, off you go. My husband and I were standing in a long queue and he was being annoying as usual. And he kept pinching my ass. So I reached back, I grabbed his balls, and I squeezed. But when I turned around and looked, it wasn't my husband. <laughs> A stranger pinched her ass. <laughs> no. Okay. Her husband pinched her ass and she went no, to grab I his ball. It means a stranger pinched her his ass. Her well, ass. not if her husband was there. If a stranger. Uh, no. <laughs> no. I mean, we could, we could research it, we could ask her, but I'm almost certainly sure that her husband did pinch her ass. And then but, swap places with a bloke. Yeah, or, or, or she yeah. just grabbed the wrong set of balls. Because if you're not looking, <laughs> balls feel the same. <laughs> They don't. How do you say that? <laughs> Who's up next? <laughs> Speaking of, uh, hello. Uh, my name's Joe. Joe? Yes. Joe. Very nice, Joe. <laughs> All right, where are you from, Joe? I'm from a little town in South Wales called Monmouth. Uh, so, Joe from Monmouth, delight the nation. Oh. Right, well, um... <laughs> It was very early one morning, and I was running a bit late for an important meeting, and I left the house. Oh, that wasn't nice. He might have He's said... never been to an important meeting. <laughs> but he might have said, and I joined a queue, and this woman just... <laughs> <laughs> OK, pretty. Uh, that's all, everybody. Well done. If you'd like to 
join is on the show and have a go in the red chair. Contact us via our website at the stress. Uh, thank you very much to my guest, Christina Ricci, <laughs> Steve Merchant, Ricky DeVace, and Pixie Law. Join me same time next week with Six Sense and Euro's wedding star Tony Collette and TV's coolest uh, call girl, Billy Piper. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>Denzel Washington stars as an American football coach in a true story of racial prejudice and sporting endeavour later here on BBC One Wales. Remember the Titans is at one o'clock. Frank's back on the BBC. <laughs>